guys, I hope you're really well and are having a good day today. I decided to film my bad skin day beauty routine because today I just woke up with really, really bad skin for me. I had blemishes all over this side of my face, they were red, I was oily, it was pretty damn disgusting. But you know, I thought I'm going to turn that negative into a positive and show you guys how I create a makeup look when I am suffering from a bad skin day. So for me, bad skin days can be because it's that time of the month, or if I've been eating rubbish, if I've been travelling a lot, if I have not been drinking enough water, and at the moment it's probably all of the above. So as you will see in the makeup free shots, I am really suffering from a load of redness around this area. But when I am suffering, I do tend to switch around quite a few products, which I thought I would share with you because it might be useful if you do suffer as well from brain Breakouts like me. When it comes to cleansing the skin, I don't actually change up my cleansing routine that much because I find that it's good to keep my skin in a routine and prevent any kind of fluctuations in oil production. So I don't actually change up my cleansing and toning routine that much, but I do add in a couple more products. I find that Origins has always been the brand that I reach to and I really trust when it comes to my skin. So the first thing that I add into my routine, and I use these after I have cleansed, is the Spot Remover Blemish Treatment Pads. Now I've had this tub for probably about 8 months um, and I only really reach for these when I am having a bad skin day so usually once or twice a month I will just use a pad or two just to kind of tone and regulate out my skin and this has of course got ingredients in it which fights the blemishes which is great and it really helps to start working on improving your skin as well as treating them. And then another product from Origins which is even more targeted to actually fight those blemishes, get any nastiness out of the skin and something which I've relied on ever since I started beauty blogging is this and it's the Origins Super Spot Remover. Now this was actually introduced to me by a friend, she had this little pot in her handbag and I think I remember laughing at her because it was just such a tiny little pot but she was like no Josie you have to try this, it, honestly it works miracles and I've still had this pot from before I started my blog, maybe a little bit unhygienic, but um, it still works for me. So what I do is apply a little bit of the gel onto my fingers and then from my fingers directly onto the blemishes. I don't get it elsewhere on my face firstly because there's only this much in the pot and I don't want to waste it, but also it is very strong. So if my, sorry to be gross, but if the spot is actually open um, and it, you can really feel it, it'll really sting and you can feel it pulling out all the crap, but I personally love that feeling, it brings tears to my eyes but I love knowing that this product really really works. At the moment my spots are kind of more scars and just redness and probably more under the surface so I didn't get that stinging feeling but I still got that really tingly sensation which I love because it's just I know that it's working. So I apply this directly onto the spots and then leave it for maybe half an hour to let it kind of work its magic before using either a face swipe or a micellar water to remove the almost film I guess that it leaves on the skin. At night however I won't remove the film, I'll just leave it and then stick my normal moisturiser over the top. As well as adding these two into my skincare routine I also like to give myself a bit of a pamper and when I have got bad skin one of the face masks that I reach for on a really regular basis is this one and it's the Spotless Skin Blackhead Eliminating Face Scrub. Now it says face scrub but I actually leave this on my skin as a mask before starting to scrub it off. So it's like an exfoliator but because all of those ingredients are so skin loving and I do feel them pulling out the dirt from my skin when I have it on so I leave this on for about five minutes before I hop in the shower to scrub it all off and again the ingredients in this I think it's got tea tree, zinc, PCA which absorbs excess oil, chamomile which of course is really soothing for the skin and witch hazel which we all know is really good for tightening and cleansing out those pores. So I find that this is a really good addition to my skincare routine when I am suffering from bad skin. So now prepare yourself because you're going to see my makeup free face and I'm going to show you my beauty routine and makeup routine for when I have bad skin days. So beware and enjoy! So the first thing that I'm going to apply to my clean face is this, and this is a new launch from Vichy, and it's their Beautifying Anti-Blemish Care 24 Hour Hydration Cream. And I don't use a moisturiser on days that my skin's not particularly good because I find that this is a bit of a multitasker, it's kind of um, a bit of a primer, but more of a treatment and a moisturiser in one. So I just do 
kind of half a pump. I find that a full pump of this is actually too much, but this does just sink into my skin really quickly and I apply it all over, not just on the areas that I am suffering from blemishes. And this has been formulated by Vichy to really target adult acne. Um, an adult acne isn't what you might think, like your whole face covered in really bad spots, but even just like I mentioned, the area of breakout that I've got, that's still classified as, as adult acne. Um, and this product really just helps to get any of the nasties out of your skin and as well as creating a really good base for makeup. So whenever I'm having a bad skin day, this is always what I reach for. I've been using this now for maybe three weeks um, since it launched. You might have seen I vlogged the launch party at the Shangri-La and it's part of their normal derm range. So I also love the 3-in-1 cleanser, um, exfoliator and mask and the micellar water. So it's really good to just get involved with that whole routine if you do suffer from blemishes. And because I want my makeup to stay in place all day long, I don't want it sliding around and revealing this horrible area of skin, I'm also going to use a primer. And this is actually a brand new one from Collection, and it's their Primed and Ready Mattifying Pore Minimizer Primer, which has ingredients by Witch in there. So Witch, you probably know, is a skincare company um, that produces lots of products for spots um, and bad skin days, so it's really good that it has that kind of skincare element to it as well. And I'm not putting this all over, just on those certain areas that I tend to get a little bit shiny, on my T-zone, on that area of redness, and then across my forehead, which is where I do tend to get the shiniest. So this instantly, as you can probably see, has mattified the skin and it'll help keep my skin prepared and ready for makeup and hopefully stop the oil throughout the day. On a normal skin day, I would apply foundation and probably not put that much concealer on at all, but today, because I have got so much redness there, I'm going to use my Amazing Concealer, and it's actually called Amazing Concealer, to firstly get rid of the redness in this area. Now, I don't want to transfer any germs from my fingers, um, from my face to my fingers to the tube, so I'm gonna start by just putting the amount that I think I'm gonna need on the back of my hand, so I don't have to keep touching the nib of this, because that could probably get a little bit unhygienic. And then I'm gonna use my finger to just start patting it onto those areas of redness. I'm really gonna cover the whole area, and you can see that instantly the redness is just completely gone. It's such a good, strong concealer, you don't really need that much. I've got a small amount on my hand, putting it on my chin, just making sure all of those spots I've got some concealer on and I'm just patting, I'm not doing any blending at the moment, just patting it on so as not to aggravate the skin. I'm quite lucky right now that these, um, these blemishes are really more just like marks, so just red areas, so not too raised, and this just completely neutrifies the colour of them. Neutrifies, neutralises. So I'm not going to worry too much about blending that because the blending really takes place for the next step, which is foundation. When it comes to foundation, I look for slightly heavier coverage when I do suffer from bad skin, but also I don't want to block up my pores. So for that reason, I'm going to be using this one, which is the Pure 4-in-1 Liquid 14-Hour Wear Foundation. Now, I really like the texture of this one. It's a liquid foundation, so it does blend nice and easily. One pump is usually enough. I put that on the back of my hand, and because it is a mineral-based foundation it really doesn't block up the pores but I still get the coverage that I need so I'm just going to dot that on with my finger and then I'm going to use my trusty Zoeva 102 silk finish brush just to blend this all in. It's actually a little bit pale for me at the moment because I've been obviously in Costa Rica but it still blends in really well. Excuse the mirror, <laughs> I didn't have time to do like a big proper setup this morning so I'm just gonna hold my mirror. I'm using more of a dabbing motion here, usually I blend it a little bit more like that but because I want to keep as much of that coverage as I can I'm using more of a dabbing motion which I find keeps it, um, keeps it a little bit thicker. Okay so I'm really happy with that coverage but if you did want a little bit more coverage, I've still got a little bit of redness on my chin and on this area here, then you can go in with an even stronger concealer. One that I took away with me to Costa Rica and that I've just become obsessed with is this one from Tarte which I got from QVC and it's their Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Concealer and this is a really heavy duty concealer so again I've just popped a little bit on my hand and I'm just dotting it onto those areas. I'm not going to use the kind of doe applicator that it comes with, just again, because I don't want to transfer any germs. So putting another dot of that onto my hand, and then I'm just gonna pat it in to those areas, and also whatever's left, 
under the eyes as well just to brighten up that area. And then again I'm going to use my Zoeva just to make sure it's perfectly blended. I always finish just by blending it down the neck just to make sure that there is no lines and that everything is a nice even colour. So hopefully the camera is picking up that I've got a nice kind of glowy fresh complexion now and you can't really see any redness or any blemishes. The only telltale sign is a few little bumps but there's really not that much you can do to cover up bumps unless you really do cake on the makeup which is not going to be good for, um, for how you look or for healing those blemishes. So I'm not going to add any more coverage but what I am going to do is add a little bit of healthy colour using some bronzer. And my favourite, whether I've got a good skin day or a bad skin day, at the moment is the Hourglass Ambient Light Bronzer. So I'm just going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Bronzing Brush, blush brush, to add a little bit of this into the usual areas, starting with the cheek, a little bit of kind of contour movement, and doing that figure of three where the sun would naturally catch, just on the forehead, cheeks, down the nose, and a little bit on the chin. Make sure it's nicely blended so it looks nice and natural down the neck again, I want to keep it all the same colour. And I really find this bronzer just gives such a lovely healthy glow that you can definitely get away with having the odd pimple here and there because it just gives you such a nice sun-kissed look. My tan sadly is fading and this is really helping me to keep that healthy radiant look to my skin. So I've not gone too heavy on the bronzer because I really don't want to dry out the skin. But next I'm going to move on to eyebrows and for that, no change in my usual routine, I'm going to use my Urban Decay Brow Beater. Firstly, shaping the brows with the spoolie end. Desperately need my brows doing soon, they are pretty horrendous. And then the scroll up pencil end just to fill in all of those gaps. So when I do my brows, I just tend to use really light stroking movements just to almost replicate the effect of hairs. I am quite lacking in the, um, what do you call it, the first part of the brows. I don't really have many hairs there, so I really do have to use a fine pencil such as this one to almost draw them in and try and replicate what hairs would look like. And then for the rest of the brow, where it's still a little bit gappy, I just use the pencil to fill it in. But not going too crazy because my hair is quite light, so we don't want anything too bold. Filling in up to the arch, drawing in the line underneath, and then using really light strokes just to fill in the gaps. And that's my brows done. Sometimes I'll set them with a liquid brow gel like Benefit Gimme Brow or also one from Ilia. But today I'm just staying at home so I'm not going to do that. Now at this stage because my foundation and the base has had just a few moments to kind of set or sink in, I'm actually going to go in with a powder which is from the same brand as the foundation so it's pure and again this is a mineral based powder so it's not going to clog up any pores but it's just going to help to set that makeup because we really don't want it sliding around anywhere. So I'm using my Benef not Benefit, um, so I'm using my Real Techniques Bold Metals powder brush, or at least I think it's called a powder brush, not too sure, these ones don't have the names, it's the 300 brush, and I'm just going to dot the powder, I'm only picking up a really small amount and tapping it off, just in the areas that my makeup tends to run away during the day, so under the eyes, down by the nose, and also a little bit on the chin, and this just mattifies and helps to set the makeup in place, so even if I do get a little bit shiny and I do have oily combination skin, so that's quite likely, this just really helps to set it and stop me from getting those shiny patches and makeup free patches during the day. Also what's lovely about this one is it does have a little bit of an airbrush effect, so it really helps to just create that flawless, really well blended appearance to your makeup. You could do this bit before the bronzer, but I just like to complete the base, let it kind of set for a few moments and then go in with the powder. As well as the foundation having SPF, this is also SPF 15, so really good like in the summer months or any time of year really, it's always really good to make sure that we have some SPF protection on our faces. Now that that's blended, I'm going to put on a lip oil, and this is purely just for comfort reasons, and this is the Instant Light Lip Comfort Oil from Clarins. I was really gutted when these sold out last year because I wasn't able to get my hands on them, but this year I actually managed to get two. I got this one, which is um, the honey flavour, and also the raspberry, which is the pink one. So I put that on before I start my eyeshadow so it can just really be sinking in. 
For my eyeshadow I'm going to be using this absolutely ginormous palette which I got from Cult Beauty and it's a brand called Morph who are most well known for their brushes and inside is just the most incredible value for money if you can open it are this humongous or is this humongous selection of eyeshadows so I picked up this one because it has a lovely selection of neutrals and browns but also going in some more purpley shades which apparently are really really good for hazel eyes so I do like to experiment a little bit by adding in some colour. Today however I'm going to play it safe so I'm going to go in with this kind of almost terracotta brown colour which I find really really flattering I'm just taking that on an old Too Faced makeup brush. I'm going to wipe that all over my eyelid kind of just a little bit above the crease, blending it all the way in and I find that it's not too dissimilar to my skin colour so it just creates a lovely even base with a hint of colour. I find these shadows are particularly powdery so it's definitely important that you tap it off before you put it onto your face because otherwise you might end up with a little bit of eyeshadow down your cheeks. But they are really blendable in just a few seconds that is all perfectly blended. So I'm going to go in with a slightly darker shade, I'm going to use this one here just to add a tiny bit of definition to the <coughs> doorbell just went off so I'm not entirely sure where I was but I think I was about to apply a darker colour. So to create a little bit of definition on my eyes I'm going in with a slightly darker shade, this one here and again I'm using the same Too Faced brush, cutting off any excess and then I'm just going to follow the crease of the eye just to add a little bit of shadow in there. So this part of the routine doesn't really have anything to do with the fact that I'm having a bad skin day but I just don't want to go overboard on any part of my makeup so I'm keeping it quite light and natural looking. Just making sure this is really well blended so we don't have any harsh lines and then taking the same colour on a slightly finer brush, this is a Zoeva Luxe Petite Crease 231 brush just to bring that colour down to the lower lash line because I don't want to put any liner on that area so it's nice to just bring that colour down just to make it a little bit more seamless on the eye area and just finishing off blending with a smaller brush. And then because sometimes when it's that time of the month or when I am suffering a little bit from poor skin, often my eyes are a little bit red and bloodshot as well. So for that reason, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Eye Cheat for bigger and brighter eyes. And this is a nude eyeliner pencil. Nude, not white, because I find that white ones are often a little bit too harsh and too obvious, whereas this just really naturally makes your eyes look a little bit bigger and brighter. So I'm going to really carefully draw this into my lower lash line. And what I also love about this pencil is it's just so soft, so you really don't have to drag that delicate piece of skin or um, risk hurting yourself with a really scratchy pencil. Probably not very flattering me trying to do this while talking to you always tends to make my eyes water a little bit but hopefully you can see that it has made my eyes look nice and big and bright and a lot more awake and refreshed than they did before. And then to add some definition to the top lash line I'm going to use a really slim liquid eyeliner and this is actually a grey one from L'Oreal. I find that grey just doesn't look as intense or as harsh as black which is really good on days like today and this is the super liner in perfect slim. So I'm going to keep this really really close to my top lash line and do a really tiny cat flick but without going too crazy. So I've really tried to keep that line nice and thin so I've not gone too bold with the cat eye because I don't want any part of this makeup look to really be too intense or eye catching. I just want a really soft natural look and the next thing I'm going to do is curl my lashes and use a new mascara which I've been trying out which is this new one from Elizabeth Arden and it's the Grand Grand, Grand Entrance Mascara Dramatic Volume Length and Lift. Still got it in its box because it's new and I haven't photographed it yet but this one I find that the curl lasts a really really long time. In fact I'm not going to use eyelash curlers because I do think that this gives enough to curl by itself. And it's got a very lightly scooped brush so kind of similar to Benefit Roller Lash it really gets in there and lifts the lashes right from the base and the bristles are that stiff plastic which is my absolute favourite if it's possible to have a favourite um, bristle type but it really helps to coat the lashes and comb them at the same time so you really get a lot of separation. See without curling and just in a few seconds that's given real instant lift to my lashes and when I tried this out before I found that they didn't droop throughout the day so I really am so impressed first impression wise with this new mascara. Not such a fan of the packaging, I find red is quite a bold colour, but I guess with Valentine's Day around this time of year it's quite a nice change to the usual black and gold and everything we have in our makeup drawer. 
So I went in a second time on that eye and just added another layer, even though the first layer wasn't properly that dry. Um, but you can see that it's really given quite a lot of depth and volume and a real intense black colour as well. So I'm going to do the same on this eye. Just wiggling the brush slightly to comb the lashes. I do find that the brush picks up quite a lot of product so you do have to dab it off a bit before you go in on the lashes. And then I'm just putting a tiny bit on the lower lash line because you could go overboard with this mascara wand so I'm just kind of touching it really gently to pick up a bit of colour. And I think we are done with the mascara. I've been really, really impressed with this one recently. So yeah, Elizabeth Arden Grand Entrance Mascara. This is red one. I'm not entirely sure if it's out yet, but I'll leave the information down below. But so far, really, really impressed with this. And I do find that my lashes continue looking really voluminous and curled throughout the day, which is great. And finally, as it's been maybe like five minutes since I applied the lip oil, my lips are now nice and moisturised and ready to go on with a lipstick. And I'm going to use my absolute favourite, which is the Bite Beauty Amaretto Lip Creme Lip Crayon. I think that's the right name. And I just find this shade is just so flattering. So on days when my skin maybe isn't perfect and I just want a nice, soft and subtle but very flattering lip shade, this is the one I always go for. And even though my lips have still got a bit of oil on, I find that this really just glides on and still has good lasting power. So while this lipstick sometimes is quite matte on my lips because I have done it over the oil, it's got a little bit of a sheen today, which I quite like. It's nice and fresh, which is exactly what you want to look like when you might be having a bad skin day. And the very last step, which is more kind of for my comfort than anything else, is just to add a few spritzes of the Niels Yard White Tea Facial Mist. So this is really rehydrating, and because I skipped out moisturiser in favour for the Vichy, my skin may not be as moisturised as it normally is, and at the moment for me, my skin is a little bit dry anyway, so this not only is it nice and calming, but also it's rehydrating for the skin. So the last thing I'm going to do is just shake this up and apply a few spritzes. And it has the most amazing smell as well. It's kind of menthol-y. I'm not sure what the ingredients are. It kind of smells like menthol mixed with Parma violets in a really nice way, not like a sickly sweet way. And that's it. This is the finished makeup look. So hopefully you'll agree it looks quite fresh, quite bright, and definitely not bad skin day at all. I think I really credit all the things that I use for the base, starting from the Vichy product. I think that really gives your skin a bit of a kickstart when it comes to healing the blemishes, and also the makeup that I've used allows the skin to breathe as well as providing enough coverage. So I'm really pleased with this finished look, considering how bad my skin was for me to begin with. Hopefully you guys might have picked up a few tips on what you can do when you might be suffering from a bad skin day and if you're lucky enough to be blessed with good skin then go away but also I hope that you have just enjoyed this makeup routine. Do let me know in the comments if there are any products that you always reach for when you might be having a bad skin day because I'd love to know what concealer you use, what foundation you use and if there's any products that you rely on to get rid of any of those little blemishes. If you've enjoyed this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe to my channel and that would mean a lot to me if you would do that and in that case I shall see you in my next video. Bye!